I want you to imagine that your local neighbourhood, where you live right now, could play a part in reversing climate change. Imagine that it could generate all of its energy and share it with others, that it could capture and treat its water, grow its own food, and not have any waste, that it could improve your health, reconnect you with nature, and restore damaged ecosystems. Imagine that it acknowledged, preserved and celebrated its history, culture and diversity. That just by living there, it could encourage you to make positive changes in your own life. Imagine that your local neighbourhood didn't just aim to do less harm, but instead was a force for good. Well, this idea of having a more positive impact on our world is one of the core principles of an emerging sustainability approach called regenerative development, that some have started to use when designing our neighbourhoods. While we do hear success stories about what these neighbourhoods can achieve, what's equally important, and often what we don't hear about, is how these neighbourhoods are actually created. This is where my research comes in. I am investigating the processes behind regenerative development that can enable our neighbourhoods to have this positive impact. More specifically, I want to know what decisions are made, how they are made, and what influences them. These are the decisions made by local councils, architects, urban planners, developers, builders, and even community members like yourself to enable the creation of a neighbourhood like this. To understand these decisions, I have been interviewing and observing those responsible for making the decisions for some of Australia's most sustainable neighbourhoods. I'm then collecting all of this evidence and developing a way to support others who are making decisions about our neighbourhoods as to how they can create this positive impact as well. By doing so, I am able to identify the key decision-making factors that can impede and that can improve the potential for regenerative development in our neighbourhoods. So, with many out there currently facing the challenges of being confined to our local neighbourhoods, maybe it's time we change our approach. And ultimately, what I'm aiming to do is offer a different path forward. A path that is built on a different way of thinking and a different way of making decisions. A path that will mean we no longer have to keep imagining these healthy and thriving neighbourhoods, but we can actually live in them.